Okay, so when we run through this demo, this is what we're going to end up with. It's the AWX login um, with the AWX operator. Everything is here that you need. Um, once you've gone through this, don't forget to like the video, um, subscribe to the page, and hop over to Kokobo's page as well and give that a like um, because it's his work. So, okay, let's get on with it. Hello and welcome to another video from London Infrastructure as Code. My name is Dennis McCarthy and today we're going to be doing AWX using K3S on CentOS 8 with HTTPS. So I've had some requests um, on my Minikube video you might have seen um, and people weren't able to follow the documentation to, to create that. So this is from Kurokobo. It's his work. I've just made that into a video so that you can watch through and see how it works. There's just a couple of things I've added just because maybe some of the new guys or people that aren't used to this um, may not get certain things. So there, there are some slight differences. So just, you know, watch log. So this is the gist. Let me bring this up. Oh, actually, yeah, if you want to know about K3, K3S, then I'll put the link in, in there as well so you can have a quick read up on that and check that out. Um, so this is the gist. It's basically a walkthrough. There's the link to his work. And then, yeah, just thanks very much for that. Um, so at the end of this, we should have a working AWX operator um, in K3S with HTTPS. I'm doing mine in AWS and I'm going to use a T3AX large. You probably get away with something smaller, but I know it works on this and there's no resource issues. It doesn't take that long to do. Um, this is the AMI I'm using. It's a CentOS 8 minimal. This is the region I'm in and um, my user has root privilege, obviously, because I'm in AWS. So let's start right from the beginning. It's a walkthrough from everything. So. If I just build a new instance, so no fancy um, Terraform or, Amazon or Ansible, I'm just using the basics so everybody can follow this, whether you've got an account or not, you can set one up and follow this through. So, so I'm gonna use the T3A X large and I'm gonna add some more storage. You may not need it, but if you're gonna use this on a more permanent basis, you're going to want a little bit extra. And then review and launch. My key. So again, feel free to just speed through the bits. Um, when I get to actually getting AWS up and running, it takes about seven minutes. So feel free to, I, I will whiz it up myself just to, to save some time. Okay, so this is the whole bare bones right from the very beginning, following the docs and creating our AWX operator login. Okay, so let's get the IP address. That's our IP. So it takes a few minutes to come up. It may or may not work the first time. There we go. Okay, so this is the server. This is the one I've just built. So everything I'm gonna do is fresh from here. So the first thing I need to do, because my, for some reason, they don't have enough space in root. So you can see here, that there's only like two gig. It's not a lot. So I've got, you know, 20 gig this. So I'm gonna just increase that. So this may not happen with you. You may not have to do it. Cut and paste, love it, gotta love it, right. Okay, so that's just gonna grow it. It's gonna install some packages. It's gonna grow the disk, the XFS disk, and it's gonna just resize it to be the, all, take all spare space so that they'll have, it'll be about 19 gig after this. Yeah, so, yeah, so now we're at 19 gig. We can see here that we've got on slash, Lots of spare space now. Because I have hit issues before installing this stuff where you just run out of space. It's the right waste of time. Okay, so <clears throat> I am pretty much following exactly this. Um, and also be aware of some notes here about certain things that don't work if you're gonna use other authentication. Um, but I've just done it in a very easy cut and paste model. Right, so next step. Oh, cut and paste, why aren't you working? Right. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, so that's installed. Got the latest version, kubectl. Now it's kfreeze. K 
this is to just take a second. Okay, so here we are. It's finished installing, and we can see here that if we do some cluster info, we get some the information back. And if we have a quick look at the config view, we can see that we've got information there. So just one thing I want to pull out is <coughs> in the docs um, for the kubectl commands, like here it's kubectl, but because we installed k3s, um, you put k3s in front of it. That's the only difference. So if I try and run this command without it, Obviously that will work. Let's run the other one. Um, cluster info. Then we get this issue with localhost refused, but then because we've installed K3S, you put that in front, you get the information. So it's basically offloaded it to K3S. Um, right, so we've installed K3S. Uh, Here we are. So now we're going to make a couple of updates. So we're going to start with the host name that we've just built. So I'm going to give mine its public name because I want to access it over the internet. Um, if you're internal, then just give it the server name and the you know that you've been given yourself um, in DNS. Okay, so that's my name. And then we're going to run the OpenSSL command. This is going to create our certificates. Okay, that's done. And then there's a couple of files to change. So again, just going back through, um, we are just following this section here. So we're now down to modifying the server name and the password if you need to. So if we update this file, and I'm gonna change this host name to mine. Okay, that's him. And you can change the password if you want, but this is just a lab environment for me. So I'm just gonna keep these the same. So there they are, they're those two. Right, so all the configuration files are done. Now we are going to create some backup directories again. Go back to the original docs. Um, this is where we prepare the persistent volumes. You know, so do that now and also apply okay so they've all been created that's cool so now we're ready to do the in basically the install of the of the operator here we go <coughs> this will take seven minutes for me Okay, so this has now finished. So you can see here, replicates what we have here, and also what we have here. So it's finished. So now the next section is to just check. Come out of that. Okay, so we can see all the components are there and here. So now it's time to try and log in. So I'm gonna open the address. Um, it probably won't connect. I need to open port 443. So let me do this on Google Chrome. So if I come back here, okay, 
and here we are. So we're on, and we can log in. So the password was answer ball one two three exclamation mark, and we're in. You can see that we've got all everything is here. It does say it's not secure, but probably because we're using our own personal thing. But it is HTTPS. Good. Yeah. So here you go. So that is it. Fantastic. So um, thanks for following through. Thanks again to, for Kurokobo for making this page, and I hope that you have success creating this with HTTPS. Thanks very much. Take, take it easy.